Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on Shanshan.co. Today we're going to react to Natasha Newton. So looking at her YouTube page, she has a really nice banner, just a little snippet of one of her paintings. And then she goes, um, she doesn't have an intro video, but that's not too bad. Uh, she has her uploads, which makes sense. Um, and then she has kind of subdivided playlists. She has her art hauls vlogs which i think has to do with her painting um, she has some tutorials as well sketchbooks studio art process light fast tests which is really good to know places so i guess she had a little bit of tours and popular uploads i think she should probably rotate the popular uploads at the very very top i would rank these playlists by whoever's getting the most views I'm not sure it's get all ranked that way. So she might want to look at that and have that re-ranked a little bit or just think about it a little bit maybe. So let's get to the first video. So the first video is absolutely massive art haul. Seven shops including Jackson's Art. Choosing keeping Amazon Colt pen. Okay. Oh. It helps you put the headphones on. <laughs> I didn't know what's going on. Hi Sorry, everyone, to... welcome to this massive art haul video. I think this is quite possibly the largest art haul I've ever done. I'm going to try and be as quick as possible going through the different items because I would quite like to be able to swatch in this video too. But if it seems like it's going to be a long one, I will split it up. So it's nice she has a nice, you know, talking. She has a voiceover in the background. Actually, she's just recording as she goes. It would be nicer just to be a straight head-on shot and then maybe cut it in there if you wanted to, but it is nice that she's showing the detail shot. Let's skip ahead a little bit. In that one. So the first items. And um, three in this lovely little envelope with the gorgeous bird stickers. I've just unwrapped the bubble wrapped package. So now she has and some music that's really good. was inside. That's really cute. Look how special this is. That's a, a really cool touch. A bottle of ink, and it actually so cool. has a wax seal on top, and a little cork stopper with the string. Now this is a metallic gold ink. So look it's how so cool. That is. A very great marketing here on the part of the company. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Really nice zoom shot, I think. Let's go up here. I'm going to see if I can take the outer. Um, band off so then i can show you what the really beautiful is like with that really but um i love this branding embossed print. everything is so well packaged and so beautiful but so yeah, i'll try and take that off and show you the paper right, let's skip ahead a little bit it's um, really nice yeah they look really nice they both came from jackson's by the way Okay, this um, was what I bought from AP Fitzpatrick. I'm gonna put that to the side because we'll have a look at that separately in a moment. Um, in here, we have a real mixture of things from Jackson's, Amazon, Paper Story. <laughs> I think I think that's it. But um, I think we'll start by... Skip ahead a little bit. Um, earthy colors of theirs. So I have Venetian red, Warm sepia, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber, and Naples yellow. I like Naples yellow because it's a bit of a a softer yellow. I don't tend to use yellow much in my work, and I kind of feel like Naples yellow is more my kind of yellow. So yeah, I have six of their. It's really nice looking. Let's just go ahead. Out and have a good look at that later. But here's the little palette itself. It comes with um, a little card on it saying, I'm unique. All colors inside are made with the highest pigment load possible. Really I'll be cute. switching all of these. I think it will be in a follow-up video because this is gonna take us ages. Skip ahead a little bit. In here, I wanted to expand my regular gouache collection. So I think this type of um, unwrapping is very typical of tech videos they have like unbox an iphone and they open it up and it's all cool and everything i think a few artists do this as well as like unbox their supplies you can do it obviously it gets view count but i don't know how much value it is for the viewer at home but it is kind of cool if you're watching along and you're kind of amateur artist and you're looking up to her as a painter so i think that's pretty cool let's skip ahead a little bit this of one so the highest light fastness um which you don't always get with pinks and reds actually um discovered this absolutely loved it was like i have a new favorite color 
and then I saw a video on YouTube just the other day saying that they have discontinued uh -oh. um, the pigment. Um, That's no, terrible. What was the pigment called? Was it PR? All right, let's skip ahead. And look at the incredible. In fact, I'm going to get Those rid of really this nice box brushes. so you can appreciate it properly. There we go. You can appreciate how beautiful these brushes are. This is a really nice, it has a quite a long video here. I'm going to skip ahead to the next video. So this one's Artist Vlog 40, August, September to 2021. Painting, sketchbook, landscape, succulents. So that's kind of interesting start. Let's start this off. So you get a nice overview of the, all the painting atmosphere, which is kind of cool. Like the painting taped out, the painting area. And everything on the side. A very clean painter, obviously. He's painting, I think, on a marble table, which is like. Marble is actually. Um, can soak up a lot of colors, so it's very dangerous to paint on marble. Some other stones you can, maybe, but. I don't think I'd recommend it, but. You know, if you got the money, why not? Very nice zoom shots here. Let's skip ahead a little bit. The views are amazing and the church itself is really quite special. Each time we've taken a picnic with us to enjoy on the way up there. This is a really nice vlog and her view of the travel of her day in life where she lives. That's really cool. You get a really nice view for this, which is a really nice add-on. Slightly chaotic nature of all the branches and the leaves. It's interesting kind of... Um, abstracted a little bit unrealistic obviously with the colors but very popping you know with that red on top of the brown and all that because I doubt there's any red in the branches into the tree there could be in the leaves obviously if it's fall but I like her style it's a little bit you know she has definitely I've also been working on a large landscape palette. painting on canvas this month Progress has been slow because I've been busy with other things, but I'm working on it when I can, usually in short sessions. It's going to be predominantly muted greys and greens, and I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. I hope that by the next vlog it will be finished. She has a really nice tonality in her voice. She just walks really nice and slow and evenly paced, and she has this almost whisper-like voice to the sound which is a really nice voice. I think my voice is okay. Hers is really good, I think, especially for video. Nice detail shot of the paint. It's nice she has actually paint on her hand. You know, she has fingernail polish, but it's not overly posh, like a lot of painters will be super perfect. Although her backgrounds look very beautiful, you know, you got the rag, the perfect towel and all that, but it looks kind of painterly, like you're actually painting. Nice shot of the supplies. I really like her style of painting. It's really cool. It's very, very much her own illustrative style, but very, very cool. Textured, very unique. Great shot of the paint. Let's skip ahead a little bit. But I'm going to show you out of the window now so you can see what kind of day it is. Can't really see the hill in the background. You can see some of the trees, but... Um, I can see a tree line, should I say, but I can't really see the hill. And this is a really cool, she has the outside of the shot. And if you go to the UK at all, it's always kind of cloudy, hazy, overcast. So it gives a real impression onto your painting. It really influences how you paint. Like I'm down in Florida, so there's a lot of hurricanes and crazy storm formations and lightning. So you get really inspired to paint crazy cloud formations. I've kind of taken a break from that recently, but that's definitely, you know, your local weather has a huge impact on yourself and especially how you paint which you can see in her painting at that grays kind of overcast kind of feel to her paintings as well it's kind of the english countryside and um i really love what the sky is doing it's looking very let's skip ahead a little bit it's a really uh, nice section problems though. with a few leaves though it's very delicate and when touching they come off uh -oh, so i'm no trying to propagate three of them there and we'll see whether we can grow an extra succulent but he looks really good doesn't he very nice little detail shots here and this is a great exercise if you're learning how to paint and so yesterday morning practice. before i started painting i Just decided paint as many as to firstly swatch out all of my green pencils this is all of the current collection of greens i have some of them look quite blue but they're still kind of on that green scale and i have this gorgeous um yellowish one here this is the Carandash luminance olive yellow which i recently bought 
And, and this is a really great exercise if you get pencils, paints, anything is make kind of a color sketch like this. Label out all your paints. You don't have to be as clear written as she has, but if you do this for your pencils, for your paints, for your pens, pencils, this will really give you a feel for the materials before you start to use them and use a little bit here, but then it really gives you a really nice guidebook and obviously it makes for a great video as well. So skip ahead a little bit. The more bluish greens and these really dark ones. This group of trees at the top of the field, this is the dark sap green, which is one of my favourite greens from Caran d'Ache Luminance. So I use this Faber-Castell nice Abrectura watercolour marker in earth green. Never this um, I used for this tree here. Hmm. I used the bullet tip end um, because it has a brush pen end and a bullet tip. So I used that for the main part of the tree. Um, I added details like little leaves and so on with, I think it was um, the Midnight Black. So very nicely done here. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. This brush pen in earth green. So these are the same colour, essentially just different styles of pen. So basically the fields have a layer of the pen and then I work on top in the pencil. So I kind of do this too in my, I usually do this at the end kind of, I analyze kind of how the painting is. It'd be nicer to see like kind of the actual time lapse of the painting kind of coming together as she used the materials and then talk about it or talk about a voiceover. But just to have kind of a half finished painting and talk about it, it's kind of like you don't really know. You don't see the beginning, you don't see the end. It's kind of nicer, I think, beginning to end feel. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Products from them and they're all in that color. You can tell how much I love it. Um, so yeah, and basically I added details with the Don't Light Fast Midnight Black one of my favorite blacks because it's more like a really dark uh like a midnight blue almost really um but a lot of the lines and details were done in that it's just less harsh than a traditional black the other thing you can tell is it's a pretty big room i think because the echo isn't that severe but there is just a slight christmas to your echo not an echo but it's kind of a christmas to the voice because there's no soundproofing so if you add let me show you this kind of material in your background on the walls, like I have it all on this wall here. Ideally, I'd have it on that wall behind me, but it's a kitchen, so you can't do that. But if you cover, you know, 50, 60, 70% of your walls, it's gonna have this really soft, rounded, rich. And because she has a really crisp voice, I don't think it's much of an issue, but some other artists, they have a really small room, and that echo is very obvious. I don't wanna call it the guy's name, because I'll be in more trouble with his fans. <laughs> But uh, you don't have any echo because she's in a very large room, I think. So it's just crispness sound because you can hear that kind of the sound hit the floors. And she has hardwoods, I think, maybe. Maybe she has vinyl, but it's hard floors. It's not carpet. So the sound is just very kind of not echoey, but it's just crisper than it could be with that kind of foam, which gives it a more richer sound. And, uh, yeah, and the Molto marker as well. So that was created with basically just these materials here. Right, let's go to the next painting or next studio the next pain the next video <laughs> so this is art studio tour 2021 aesthetic home workspace a little bit longer than that but <laughs> i like this font that's really kind of nice very artistic kind of goes with her style of painting as well so very well chosen it's a really nice small setup small room which is good for drawing i think that's a good space for drawing It looks better on film though, definitely. Like you want a clean image. For, so it's always kind of a debate whether you Hi want to mess with the studio or not. Welcome to my studio on and film. to this new studio tour. I thought it was about time to film an updated version because the studio has undergone some changes recently. So come inside and I will show you around. So nice music out here. I mean, it's a very nicely decorated area, very practical. Very clean, um, not very messy, very clean working artist, obviously. I think with pencil, that's very easy. So and let's start with the desk. Just a little bit of ink. So I tend to keep quite hard. a few things on my desk. I have all of my pots of brushes and some inks on this zinc tray, which is really handy because I can lift it off if I need more space. I also have my little ceramic mixing dishes and some more inks. Ah, that's how she keeps it clean and my new massive ceramic palette, 
which I'm using for gouache. Hmm. I use glass myself, but this is cool as well. Because glass I like because you can clean it all the way down to the glass. The ceramic, you can close all the way down to the white too. It's both, both work well, I think. Here I in this butcher's tray, I keep all of the brushes I'm currently using the most. That's and smart. also my little vintage tin that contains my small collection of Neocolor pastel. Skip ahead a little bit. My watercolor tubes and another for my gouache tubes. So I like to have them separate. And then in the other drawers, I just have a really random assortment of stuff, as you can see I here. got the same color wheel. <laughs> the mine doesn't look as good. It's been all torn up. I don't think it made my move very well from Ohio down to Florida here. Very nice and clean space. Let's go ahead. And compasses and a water pot, different things like that. So let's talk about this amazing desk that's made its way into the studio recently. I think it's a stand-up. So this was desk. my old desk photographed after we'd taken everything off and before we put it in the room that will be my office once it's renovated. As you can see, it's quite large. It was a dining table and I bought it at an auction right <laughs> about four years ago. We painted it, I think it's mid-century. I love it and it will have a new home in my office. A few months ago, FlexiSpot contacted me and offered to send one of their sit-stand height adjustable desks. This I could recommend. When it arrived, it was so incredibly well packaged that I decided to film a few clips so that you could see how well protected all of the dip. Skip that a little bit. If I have a jar full of water, it will be absolutely fine. And it even has a memory so it remembers the height that you prefer to stand at and sit at. Oh, that's really cool. The reason this desk will be so useful to me in my working life is because I suffer from a lot of back pain and shoulder and neck pain and yep. this in turn causes migraines because I'm sitting hunched over, my posture is really bad, so this will help with... It's also, I mean the standing will help a lot but you're hunched over like flat um, when you paint like this on a flat surface you're hunched over naturally whereas if you paint on an easel and you're straight you can stand up and be you can have a right eye level and you don't have any uh, pain in your brush, I mean in your back. The issue is though, if it's very drippy, it will have a different effect. So with watercolor, you probably do want to paint flat and with kind of acrylic, maybe gouache, you can paint uh, vertically, but you have that drip um, problem. So sometimes you have to paint flat and then you're going to be hunched over. So I think it's just the style of painting. It's really causing a lot of those issues, but you'd, you'd have to convert to like pure acrylic and not using drip and you know it just kind of limits if you paint vertically versus horizontally right so a different style of painting techniques kind of sometimes influence how your back's going to feel anyway i'll definitely let you know over the next few months how much of an effect this has had on my general health i right, skip that it's a commercial full of stuff and the two black trunks i bought at auction in march of this year one holds lots of packaging materials and the other here. one <laughs> has spare canvases and quite a few other things in there too. On the top of this one, I'm storing all of my new and used sketchbooks. Very beautiful materials, nice view on the countryside on her window, which is nice. A very kind of English countryside, very kind of angry clouds look. Sometimes in uh, Florida you have some of this too, but you also have really brilliant sunny clouds too. So this is my different. cozy sit in front of the wood burner chair. And on it is Arnold the Armadillo. Skip ahead a little bit. Oh, she has a stove, which is really nice. So I'll just say overall, I think you know, she has a really beautiful studio. Finally, let's go check out her website. I haven't looked at that at all. So her first thing is, so she has kind of her about her. So right off the bat, so you kind of learn about her, which is, I think that's a pretty nice spot. She has links to Instagram outside. I don't think I would recommend that. The, the email thing is fine. YouTube, I think, is okay. Um, the problem is you get those links outside. You want the shop to be kind of the end point, and YouTube pulls those there. Instagram pulls it there. But once you're on the website, you really don't want to leave. So that's kind of... I have that a little bit myself with my YouTube videos, but I try to keep people on the site physically. So I don't have those social media links outside because I have Twitter and Facebook. And so I wouldn't recommend that. 
But that was the logic maybe five, ten years ago. People would, well, even just five years ago, I think people put all the social media links. And then recently it's kind of switched where it's like, no, you don't want that because that's your shop. So she has some of her paintings right here, which is really cool. And she doesn't have much work available, which is pretty good. Um, which probably indicates she's probably priced too low. She probably should increase the prices. If she's, um, if she's running out of supply, she should definitely be charging more. And, you know, these prints are really reasonable price, 10 pounds, 35 pounds. That's basically 50 US dollars probably and probably 12, 15 dollars uh, for these uh, mini art cards, which is really cute. I think it's a really good, uh, it's always great to have prints on your side. So that's really smart. The original paintings, my guess is she's, um, either she's slow painting, but she should probably increase her prices just to match demand. And then once you get to that equal demand where you have some paintings available, that's probably really what you want to be. Um, it depends what you want to do. You can just have like, you sell it out every time. So maybe that might be her strategy. I'm not sure. Portfolio. Some people do this. I don't tend to recommend doing a portfolio, but galleries kind of like that so it's like if you want to appeal to galleries mostly but if you're just selling direct to consumer you don't really need to have a portfolio you could just have your current work up is what i would recommend she has a mailing list let's see what this says it's interesting because she has a contact page too so i don't know why there's two all right so she only is available through the website which i would recommend if you can get a, build a big enough audience you really can just cut all your online source and point everything to your website exclusively which is really smart she has a contact i don't know why so I guess it's a license. So she's represented. So that's kind of interesting. She has a separate newsletter from the contact list. I think I would just combine these and call it contact and have one, you want to join the newsletter or B you want to do, and I would just have it all on one page, but you know, you can always change that how you want to do. She has a commissions page. I should probably do this, which is really smart. So yeah, she must be swamped because she has no commissions at all. So yeah, definitely probably a price Probably a price issue is my guess. I mean, maybe she had some, um, she took some time off or something could be a possibility, but I think it's just price issues. If you can't keep up with the supply, you're just probably undercharging. But some lot artists like to do that. I did that for a long time. It doesn't really work for me. <laughs> it's a part it works really well. So it just depends what you are, you know? And she has all these great illustrations and everything. So she's been in quite a lot of different um, books and magazines and everything. So probably she sells out quite quickly. And she probably could definitely raise her prices if she has all this kind of um, PR already out there. This is really cool. Very, very nicely done. I really like her website, just nice and clean. There's an FAQ site. I have that as well, but it's kind of secret on my page. So she just, it's always good to have an FAQ sign and then she has a sign in page. I wouldn't have the sign on page, but some people like to do that. I do mine just separately because I don't like to show that to the audience unless you want to do a VIP sign in for some stuff. That might make sense. Like if you want to give only your VIP guests first, first dibs on the art, you could do that and have kind of like your VIP pre previous clients get the first cut. And then after maybe say a day or two or a week, you release it to the general audience. You could do that. Maybe that's what she's doing with this sign in. I'm not sure why she has sign in there or maybe she just, she likes to sign in that way people have different preferences but that's natasha newton i think it'd be really nice to watch her and see how she develops uh, with this really cool landscape illustrative style i really like the style it's very unique it's not like that generic realism style she's definitely getting a feel for her own style very nice voice when she talks to about the her artwork and everything i would encourage her to speak directly to the camera here and there just to kind of it makes a much more personal connection with the artist if you know what they look like some people don't do it because they think they're going to be stalked or something i don't know it's a little strange to me i mean i do political art like against say Saudi Arabia or Syria or something. I'm, I could be actually a target, right? <laughs> but if you're doing like landscapes, I don't know what you'd be a target of, you know, like people are going to stalk you for a landscape. I don't know, but some people like their privacy, so they don't do it, which it's, it's very interesting. You do a YouTube channel, but then you're very private at the same time. It's kind of a little bit contrary, but I think she has a lot of potential here and it'll be really interesting to see how Natasha develops. So I'd encourage you guys to watch it. Uh, if you like to subscribe, you can subscribe below and I'll see you on the next Artist Reaction.